everyone. So today I want to talk to you about how to get a flat belly. You know, I have so many people contacting me saying, Freely, how do you get such a flat belly? <laughs> what do you eat? You know, what exercise do you do? All that stuff. So today I'm going to give you my best tips. I just want to let you know, just for the benefit of this video, that this is actually after two fruit meals. For breakfast I had 30 dates and for lunch I had six mangoes. The number one tip is to eat fast digesting foods. And which foods are they? Fruit. Fruit is a number one colon transit food. What is the slowest digesting food? It's meat and dairy. You know, if you have meat and dairy stuck in your colon, putrefying and rotting away, then your belly is going to bloat. And those guys are like, hey, I've got a rip six pack. Like, I eat meat and dairy, but you're calorie restricting. And you're likely taking steroids or some other form of drugs. Or you're taking caffeine, you know, which helps strip water weight. So there's a lot of little tricks out there. You know, if you see someone with a six pack, don't automatically think, well, you know, they can eat whatever they want, you know, and they can just stay like that. And that's not true. These people are doing more than they make out they're doing. So fast colon transit foods is number one. So fruit, you know, it takes about 20 minutes to digest and it moves through the colon very quickly. Within 24 hours, it is out of your body. You can't say the same for meat and dairy, which for some people, it can be over a week, two weeks that there's flesh in your gut, come on, you know, that's gross. Not only is that gross, that's going to be bloating. Eat low fat foods. And meat and dairy by default is not a low fat food. It is a high fat food, even lean cuts. It's just rippled throughout the meat and throughout the dairy and the eggs. They're all high fat. Okay, so when you eat the fat of an animal or its byproduct, then you're going to get that fat on your body. Eat animal fat now and wear it as your body fat later. You know, you know those muffin top things going on? No muffin top here, okay? And this is not calorie restriction. This is eating as much as I want. This is eating up to 5,000 calories a day. lose the salt from your diet. Okay, salt retains so many kilos of water. It literally can look like fat on our body too. When the salt retains fluid, it can look really floppy. And a lot of people think, oh my god, you know, like, look how fat I am around my midsection when the, the rest of their body is quite lean. But it's actually just salt and fluid retention. All right, so when you cut the salt, you're going to lose pounds, trust me, but do it more than a week. You know, stay off it. Salt is a drug. Salt distorts your taste buds. So you can't taste and appreciate the natural flavors of fruits and vegetables. Number four is ditch useless ab exercises. Why do I say that? Because they're useless. They really are. You know, I've been a personal trainer for over 10 years and I've seen so many people bust their ass trying to get a six pack while well, they've got this big layer of fat over the top. What you need to do is lower your body fat percentage so your abdominal muscles show, you know, or you have them closer to the surface. And ab exercises just won't do that for you. What will is jogging, which I'll talk about next. Pump your lymphatic system daily. Okay, and pump it with jogging. Jogging is an amazing flat tummy maker. It really is. If you're wanting to get a flat tummy, then jogging is the first thing I'm going to recommend to you because it brings, brings down your body fat level gradually. You know, it's not some fad diet or anything. It's, it's you getting fitter. You don't have to do heaps of jogging either. For instance, I only jog every second day from like 20 minutes to an hour. And I've done that for probably the last year and a half to two years. 
And seriously, it has just helped me get the best results ever. Like, I'm very happy with the results. And I have a flat belly. You know? And it's not because I've been starving myself. It's not because I've been over-exercising. It's not because I'm eating a diet that I hate. You know, it's just, it's not that at all. You know, I'm enjoying myself. I'm eating as many calories as I want. And I feel great. have great posture. Okay, posture is really important. You know, like, if you walk around with your belly out like this, you know, shoulders rolled, head down, then, you know, it's just pathetic. Like, you're going to have, your belly's just going to look all gross and you're not going to feel good about yourself. So, physiology is so important. Have a straight back, chest up, belly button drawn in. Protect your spine, you know, when you draw your belly button in, you protect your spine. So good posture. Make sure you're hydrated. If your colon is dehydrated, then it's going to hold on to whatever is in there. And then have it stuck in your colon. You don't want it in there. If you want a flat belly, you want that food to be out of the colon. And water is so important. You need to be hydrated. Your colon needs to be hydrated in order to function correctly. When you get up, drink a litre of water, all right? And aim for another three litres at least during the day, depending on what you're doing. Like if you're doing a marathon and it's super hot weather, you may need five or six litres. All right, so gauge it by looking at your pee. Make sure you're peeing clear at least eight to 12 times a day. That's the best indicator I know. If you've got yellow there, then you're not drinking enough, drink up. Make sure you focus on fitness and health, on gaining fitness and health, and quit staring at your navel and focusing on your navel all the time. Because if, if you focus on weight and sort of su superficial things like that, then you're never going to achieve them because you're never going to be happy. So focus on your health, your fitness, how you're feeling, and then the flat belly will just come as a byproduct of that. Okay, it will just come. But you need to have the right focus. Make sure you eat enough carbohydrates. Make sure you eat enough, enough fruit so you have the motivation to do the exercise that it takes to attain a flat belly. You know, if you're not doing, if you're not eating enough, then you're not going to feel motivated to exercise. You're not want to get it. You're not going to want to get out there and jog. All right. So you need to eat enough. Eating enough is vital. Number ten is patience and education. Please, please educate yourself. You know, eat a diet that works for you, works for the planet, works for the animals, works for your flat belly. You know, if you're on and off the diet merry-go-round, then you're just going to drive yourself crazy. I've been there, I know what it's like. You didn't get a fat belly overnight, did you? No, of course you didn't. You've been working at this for a while. Eating the wrong foods, not doing enough exercise, feeling sorry for yourself, looking in the mirror, grabbing yourself. Come on, you know, it didn't happen overnight, and this is not going to happen overnight. All right, you're not going to get the belly of your dreams overnight. You have to work for it a little bit. But on this lifestyle, it's fun. You know, this is a way that I have attained and kept a flat belly. I've been eating this way for five years, okay? Fruit does not make you fat. It does not give you a bloated belly. Okay, you might be a little bloated after a fruit meal, but come on, you know it goes down quick. And it's not the fruit's fault. If you've got food in your colon, and then you put fruit on top of it, then you're going to get you're going to get major bloating. But is that the fruit's fault? No, because the fruit is a fast digesting food, and it's mixing with the slow digesting food, and then it's fermenting and putrefying. So it's not the fruit's problem. It's actually what else is in there. You take that crap out, and, you, and then you've got a flat belly. So do it. <laughs>